Do you need to look anywhere specific? No, just look into my okay. soul. Okay, I can do that. No, you can't. Yes, I can. You know why you can't? Because your glasses are blocking it a no, little bit. Because souls aren't real. Boom. Oh, okay. This is going to be an interesting conversation yeah. then. <laughs> Tosh Show. Tosh Show. Tosh Show for Show. Welcome to Tosh Show. I'm comedian Daniel Tosh, and I'm the host of the Tosh Show. We're here in beautiful, sunny Southern California. Eddie, you like California, don't you? I love California. When did you move here? Maybe 2002, 2003, around there, yeah. I moved here in the late 90s. I tell you what, people, I'm about to do a PSA. For California. You ever see those commercials where it's just for the state and they always have cool Arnold Schwarzenegger's always in it. Somebody's uh, rollerblading or something. I, they, they never asked me to do those, but I feel like I should do those. I, I, because right now, California is hurting. Oh my goodness. People are leaving in droves and I couldn't be more excited about it. <laughs> my only goal in life. My, my goal as a child, I might've said this on the show before, but I'll say it again now. My goal was never to become a comedian. My goal was to live in California. That was my childhood goal, honestly. I mean, I just, as a kid who grew up in Florida, uh, who loved to surf, the surf is garbage in Florida. Hey, good luck with DeSantis fixing that. You can't fix garbage beach breaks. Oh, there's a hurricane. It's going to be good for six minutes before we all die. <laughs> I just I just love the state. I've always loved it. People complain about California, the high taxes. Yeah, great. When I used to make no money, which, believe it or not, was a majority of my career, didn't care at all. It was just fun making ends meet. And now I do make money. I, I give half of it away, at least, in taxes. Good. The point is... I love this state, and I'm, I'm happy to be here. You got any videos for me, Eddie? I do. I got a video. Here we let's, go. Let's see it. Let's see it. I'm not going to do any jokes about this video. It seems like an amazing bar. <laughs> a floozy, an old man, a drunk, and an LP walk into a bar. There's your setup. I'll let you guys write the punchline, and I'll read that next week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I probably won't. Well, you got to yeah, play a different video. Why you run out of there like that? <laughs> Why are you recording me? <laughs> This don't make no sense. Every time we go out somewhere and we're trying to watch a game in peace, you act a fool and we get put out. Every time. They in there talking about fly, eagle, fly. But what you thought they was going to do? They was scared because they know they cheated too, man. Damn. My chest hurt. I assume his, his chest pain turned into something a little more seriously and she put the camera down and called 911. <laughs> At least that's what I'm hoping. I want to point out to people that this video was posted after week 11 of this year's NFL season. And if I remember correctly, Dallas was in Philly and they lost a heartbreaker. Dax uh, stepped out of bounds on a two-point conversion. Uh, the final play ended up on the one-yard line. Eddie's a big Philly fan. He'll, he'll listen to one of his podcasts if you want to hear about fucking <laughs> Eagles games. But now this week, you got your redemption. Down goes Jalen Hurts. I'll tell you what, the way Jalen Hurts, the way they could have won that game is if they would have just tush-pushed the whole time. When it's fourth and short, they all get behind Jalen Hurts, and then the announcer has to go, did you know that he can squat 600 pounds? Like, I give a shit at all. And, and their success rate is like 98% on fourth and short. Okay, well, and then they say, that, oh, we're going to change the rules next year. This is what I want Philly to do. If it's so effective, do you know how many art yards they actually average when they uh, do the tush push, Eddie? It's like three. About three yards. 
What's three times four, Eddie? Exactly. We're at 12. That's 12. That's more than a first down. So why aren't they doing the tush push on first down, second down, third down, fourth down, just every single play the entire game? You do that for one game, every play the tush push, and not only will the rule get changed, but it will be the single greatest football game (laughs) in the history of of the NFL. We'd love to see it. Every play, tush push the whole way, just up and down the field. <laughs> I just think it would be amazing. Now, I know what you're going to say. Oh, Jalen Hurts, he can he can squat 600 pounds, but that's, you know, that's his max. You don't max, you know, 50 plays a game. That's too many tush pushes. <laughs> I say one time. Come on, coach. Speaking of Philly, that's where our guest today is from. She was an attorney, which I don't find that interesting, but she quit to focus on her true calling, which was talking to animals. Oh, ding, 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 ding. I find that extremely interesting. She can talk to my dead pet. Yeah, I'm going to have you on the show. I'm not going to fly you first class, but I'll fly you out here to talk to me. Enjoy. My guest today stopped practicing law to begin a new career charging clients tons of money to speak to their pets. Seems like a lateral move. Please welcome my favorite animal communicator, Nikki. Nikki, Hello. thank you for coming here. Wait, how old are you? Can I ask? I only, I only ask, because I'm not supposed to ask, but you look very young to me, so that's why I was comfortable asking. 34, 35 okay. in January. Okay, you're a lot older than I thought. Great. <laughs> 34 in January. Hold on, I can do this. 19th. Up. 14th, 25th, 31st. Yes. January 31st? Yep. You serious? Mm-hmm. My daughter's birthday is January 31st. No. Uh-huh. I was upset. She's going to be an animal communicator. Will you be a proud and supportive dad? <sighs> if she's an animal communicator, I will not be... Proud would not <laughs> be the right word. I would be supportive. That's all you need to do. I feel like I can skip my normal first question that I ask all my guests. Uh, check, you believe in ghosts. I mean, what do you mean by ghost? I don't know. That's just a question I always ask everybody. Do you believe in ghosts? Like the white little Casper thing? No. But do I believe that we can connect with spirits mm-hmm. of our animals? Uh, 60% of my work? Mm-hmm. Got it. Crazy. Check. <laughs> um, all right. You always hear people that like were a lawyer and then they switched to something, for lack of better words, crazy. Okay. You know, like, oh, he was a lawyer, but then he became a comedian. And it's always like, oh, and I'm supposed to be impressed that you stopped doing this impressive job to do something less. It's like you never hear somebody say, oh, I stopped being a lawyer to become a doctor. Because no one's happy as a lawyer and no one's happy as a doctor. So Mm. nothing would be accomplished in that move. Did you like law? No. Not at all? Not at all. Yeah, it was it was it parents? What forced you into that field? At 21, when you graduate college, I was like, what do I want to do with my life? I had no idea, so why not be a lawyer? And first year of law school, I realized this is not what I want to do. But at that point, you're already financially invested. You're already there. So finish. How much money all in for your education? High 280s, 280,000. High 280s, so 289? I don't remember. I mean, just, I mean high 200s, <laughs> okay. high 200s. That's, I don't, but I think it was like, 280 something. I have sure, no sure. idea. Sure, sure. No, okay. I was in litigation in Center City, Philadelphia. It was just chaos. I hated every second of it. No lawyer is happy. I know one lawyer that enjoys being a lawyer. I love my lawyer. Does he love his life? Don't, never asked him. Both my eyes were twitching at separate times. I hated all of my clients. Judges were cranky. Cops were miserable. And then I learned animal communication was possible. And how does one do that? Just like you communicate with people. L- let me ask you this. Okay. Okay. Have you ever had a time where your phone rang mm-hmm. and you knew who was calling before you looked at it? Yes. Telepathy. Okay. No. Yes. It's, uh, only one person calls me. Ha- not true. Have you ever had a time where someone, friend, partner, anyone was about to ask you a question or say something and you answered them before they asked it out loud? Grilled cheese. That has nothing to do with what I just oh, said. All right. Uh, yes to that qu- uh, question as well. That's telepathy. Telepathic communication is nonverbal communication. It's a universal language. That might sound weird. All of my sessions are done remotely through a picture. I receive images or thoughts in my head or feelings in my body. Like if they have a sore right back foot, my right ankle might start throbbing. 
And I can describe it the best as like, I can kind of, I get like a mental image where I can see almost what I think your living room might look like if the animal's talking about the living room. Or when I hear a thought, it's like if I'm reading a book to myself silently, like how that would sound, but it's not my thought. Just takes practice. But it's something every human being can do, which is why I have an online school and I teach people every month, every day, to talk to animals and they're really doing it. How much do you charge for that school? It's 65 a month. 65 a month? Yeah, they pay that monthly. Is, no, that is so that's so affordable. Yes. How often do they uh, We have weekly calls. So uh-huh. twice a month we have an hour long Q&A, twice a month we have an hour and a half long practice corner. What made you even attempt this in the first place? I hated being a lawyer. Sure, but aside from that, you know, a lot of people hate their jobs and don't go, well, I should talk to animals. Well, I learned that it was possible through a massage therapist at a Uh, local wellness center. Okay, here we go. Then I went home, bought all the books on, I Googled animal communication books. So I was like, all right, every single one of these authors are saying that everybody can do it. I'm everybody, let's try. So I just started doing practice sessions on friends and families, animals, slowly convinced myself that I was doing it. And then created Instagram, Facebook, and did readings for strangers, did well, and then that's just how it took off. You had to convince yourself first. Then I made a TikTok, and within a week of TikTok, just exploded, went viral, and that's when everything took off. Can you talk to all animals? Yeah. Living and dead? Yep. I hit a squirrel once, dead center of the back, just over it with a a heavy electric bike, and he looked at me after— I. I, or went over him, both wheels, boom, boom, and just looked at me and then ran away. Is he okay? I don't know the answer to that, but what you can ask yourself when something like that happens, why were you out of alignment? What were you, were you going somewhere you shouldn't have been going? No, I was coming home. What were you going too fast? No, I was, on a, I was on a, a little electric bicycle going down my street and a squirrel ran out in front of me and I happened to hit him. It was, he was in the wrong, uh, in fairness. When you get into a car accident or something happens, yes, it's because your energy... The essence of you, something is off. Oh, no. That's a conversation for another day, maybe. Yeah, we're going to have to But if save you're that one. truly in alignment, that shit doesn't happen. So you're saying it's my fault that the squirrel <laughs> ran out in front of Probably. me? Probably. Because of my alignment. Interesting. Yep. Huh. Were your parents uh, so proud of their, I'm going to say little daughter, because you're a small person. She's going to be a lawyer. That has to be, that has to be something for a parent. And then you say, no, 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 forget all that. I'm going to talk to animals. <laughs> it was an interesting shift. Mm-hmm. My parents are very supportive, so they were all for whatever made me happy. However, when they were moving me out of my center city law office, they were a little a little irritated that day, and mm-hmm. I could sense it. But, I mean, they've been supportive since the very beginning, but it definitely was an adjustment. So now they're proud of oh, you? Oh, I mean, they were always proud, but mm. Mm, they were. They were supportive. Okay. <laughs> my parents were never supportive. But they were never not supportive, and I appreciated that. So what does that mean? I don't know exactly, but I feel like like, like my parents were never like, oh, you should chase your dreams. It was never that. But they weren't like, all right, they were fine with me doing it. Like, mm-hmm. all right, good luck. But you're happier doing what you like doing. Am I? Yeah. Hmm. Where are you originally from? Pennsylvania, about an hour north of Philadelphia. Do you like Philly? The people are so intense. I don't like any city. Do you go into Philly often? Never. For the airport. What about the accent? Do I have an accent? No. Did you ever Did you ever pick it up? I mean, when I was you little. Ever, you ever say, you ever, John? You ever say John? As in John? Is oh, it like John? John like, the, like the bathroom? No, what are they? No, not John. Like John. How do you say it, Like Eddie? hey, Like John? Like, hey, you? Hey, hey John? John? No. You never say that? No. But they, they use that term a lot, right? Hey, John? I just think that's like gangster talk anywhere oh. you go. No, I've never heard it in my life. But you said it, so you heard it somewhere. No, I heard it. To, uh, it was written down for me to ask <laughs> you by somebody that cares about Philly. I used to say water. You say water ice? No, I used to say water. What about ice? Water ice? Water ice. You know that no one else on the planet knows what that is, right? I don't like water ice. Right, but do you know Read, that- Rita's water ice? No one knows what the words water ice. That doesn't mean anything to normal people I outside of Philly. I don't think that's true. Are you- cr- You don't have Rita's water ice? No, no. No I, no, I don't have Rita's water <laughs> ice. And no, I still don't know what it is. It's flavored ice. Right. There's you a term it. for that, and it's not water ice. What do you call it? Shaved ice. Who's, that's what we call it. Who says shaved ice? Hawaiians. The Polynesians. I'm neither of those. No. I used to say crick. 
for Creek. Uh-huh. I, I can figure that one out. But I, I don't say that anymore. You ever been to a Bucky's? No. Bucky's. It's it's from Texas. It's in the South. It's it's huge uh, in the middle of nowhere gas stations, and they have they've got a brisket station and the cleanest bathrooms in the world, and that's what they're known for. I don't even know what a brisket is. Uh, like a biscuit? But no, brisket is is. I just don't know how you've studied law <laughs> and you don't know what brisket is. You single? Married? Happily? Yes. Nice. Like now. For the first seven years, it was chaos. Why is that? Oh, because the, but because you weren't happy with, with your profession? Well, that. He was fresh out of the military. We were just a disaster from the beginning. Oh. But now we're best friends, and we have two little poodles. I have a poodle. I was just going to say, do you not like small dogs? I do. I love small dogs. Oh, okay, good. And I was always one of those people that really liked dogs uh, more than kids. And then I had my own children. And that cemented it. It was. It, I definitely like dogs more. Still dogs. Definitely more. Did you have lots of pets growing up? Not really. We had a dog when I was younger that I don't really remember, but I had bunnies, hamsters, some fish. Why don't you? Why don't you go back and talk to your dog that you had as a child? I have a couple times. Uh huh. And what did he she say? Oh, I don't. Remember. No, I'm not calling her a he she. I just didn't know the gender. She Tasha. She. Oh, ta- I had a dog named Tasha growing Black up. Black Lab. No Saint Bernard. We had Tasha one and Tasha two. The first one died within like three months. So then we just got <laughs> another one and we just called it. We're like, well, let's just call this one Tasha too. Makes sense, my I guess. Da- my dad buried it like literally right behind our garage. You know how big of a hole you have to dig for a 200-pound St. Bernard? It was just insanity. <laughs> Did you have a bulldozer? No. We hand shoveled it. it. This is in Fond du Lac in St. Louis, Missouri. If anybody lives on Fond du Lac in my old childhood home there, you probably dug up some remains and thought it was a dinosaur. But it was just my old dog that only lived for three months. Why? Only three months? I think we didn't. What did you do? St. Bernard's get hot. He might have had heat stroke. I don't know. I have no idea how he died, why he died. I was a child. We had lots lots of dogs growing up. And we moved constantly. And whenever we moved, my dad just got rid of the dog. Oh, that's sad. Insanity. Yes. I don't even know. I never even thought to ask, like, well, why can't the dog come with us? And he's like, dogs don't move with us. That's why you love traveling with your dog so much now. Look at you. You are smart. He you just have a gift. You just have a gift of listening to people, and then you can just spit it back at them, and then they hook, line, and sinker. But that's what you do for a living. Mm, fair enough. Yeah. Now, do you feel like there's people— You say you teach people to do this. Do you feel like there's people in this line of work that are taking advantage? I think there's there are people like that that exist in every profession. Sure, but is this, this has to be skewed way more— uh, snake oil salesman than than other professions. N- no, because I don't think anyone would get into this if they didn't have a heart for the animals. But this is like, I assume people are just wanting to have some connection with their animal on some level. So my my question is, are you, are you forced to kind of always give more positive spins on what you're hearing or seeing? I just share what I receive. Mm-hmm. People always ask me, has the animal ever said that they hate their life, they uh-huh. hate their their family? And the answer is no, because people who are paying me to do this probably care about their animals. Right, but some of these animals probably were rescues or adopted from a shelter, which is a great thing. Mm-hmm. But maybe their previous owner sexually molested them. Has an animal ever told you that they were sexually molested? No, I can confidently say no. What about kidnapped? Has an animal ever said, hey, I've been taken. This isn't my rightful owner. Nope, but I had an animal say they voluntarily just left. It was a pig. He left where he was because he hated it and they didn't have enough time for him. You, you, You know, a lot of times when someone commits a horrific crime, they like to go back and they stand and they like to, you know, uh, in movies, this, I'm basing this on movies. Uh, they they go back to the police line and they're just kind of watching, like, oh, wonder wonder who did this. So I'm thinking maybe there's a guy out there that sexually molested his dog and then wants to get a reading just to see if his dog's going to talk. I'm very thankful that person has never crossed my path. That would infuriate me if I was ratted out by my dog. <laughs> Have you ever seen the Shaggy DA? No. Ah. Oh! That's a movie you should watch because that lawyer became a dog. What? The Shaggy DA. It's a Disney movie. It's a kid's movie. Does, does the dog die? Because if the dog dies, I no, can't watch no. it. No. 
No, the dog doesn't die. But the dog turns into the lawyer. The lawyer turns into the dog. It doesn't matter. One or the other. It's a kid's movie. It might be one of those Disney movies where at the beginning of it, it says, like, we know that there's some horrible racial thing, but we are going to just leave it the way it was because it was a different time in the 40s. Is it in black and white or color? It's. I think it's in color. Isn't it like Dick Van Dyke? Not was it Dick, Dick Van Dyke? Van, it's not Dick Van Dyke, but it's somebody You similar. sure it wasn't Dick Van Dyke? I'll look it up. I don't think so. You sure? I. You sure? <laughs> you know those m- movies uh, where like, like, oh, all of a sudden I can hear women's thoughts and, and the person walks around and they're bombarded. Is that how your life is where you're just hearing animals no. talking to you at all times? No, it's very... I think I can speak for a lot of animal communicators most that it's setting the intention to have a conversation with a specific animal. Talk about the money. You charge five hundred and fifty a session, and you have a wait list of ten thousand people. Please explain in detail how I break into this profession, and whether or not I could do thirty sessions a day. You cannot do thirty sessions a day. I do one a day. How did you come up with five hundred and fifty? It used to not be that, but I well, the sure. demand was so high, and now my sessions used to be an hour, so I used to be three seventy five, and now naturally, I don't know why they're no less than an hour and twenty. So. Price increase with that. You ought to raise if if you have a wait list this long. I think it's time to. I can't go more than that. I still want to be accessible to the, to people. Mm. Are all house cats total dicks? No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you uh, have cats? I don't, but that's only because of allergies. Same, me too. I would love to have a cat if it wasn't for my allergies. I don't want to just take medicine every day. Talk to me about uh, your drug problem with ayahuasca. You started. You st- you used ayahuasca. <laughs> And I just wanted, and then you said that that sh- showed you uh, the realm of where all communication is possible. What about shitting your pants and vomiting on yourself? Okay, so let's wait a second. Okay. I'm going to answer that. Good. Ayahuasca, okay, I've never shit myself. Good. Never threw up on myself. People do, though. I'm Very told. rare. Oh. I mean, you purge, but it's not like you're throwing up like you're drunk or sick. It's an it's an energy purge, so you it feels good coming out. Oh. When you're I've purging, never vomited and it felt good. It, it, I mean, I guess I mean, well, sometimes you need it to come up, but it's, it's always were, a painful, you know, it's not the direction things are supposed to go. But when you threw up, you were either sick or drunk, probably. Mm-hmm. In ayahuasca, you're neither sick nor drunk. You're so sometimes, drugs. no, it's not a drug. It's two plants. Okay, plants can be drugs. You can't be drug tested. There's never been a trial on it because they can't prove anything and there's nothing to test. Don't lawyer me about drugs. I'm just drugs. saying, but when you purge, uh-huh. sometimes you feel like you're filling your bucket and then you look at it in the morning and it's like two spits. There's like nothing. It's just energy and your life changes and everything How gets better. How often are you doing ayahuasca? In the beginning, oh. we did it often, but what? it healed my marriage. Uh huh. Now, maybe once a year, twice a year. Do you get excited for it? No, it's not fun. Okay. Oh. Heck no. I mean, it's it's excitement in the sense of you know your life is going to get better mm. in some way. That's why you do it. It's not like a trip or let's go have fun with my friends this weekend. No, because it's very uncomfortable. Should I have my kids do it? Who's going to listen to this podcast? I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to check with I'm going to check with my pediatrician on if I should give you my might. children ayahuasca because she's she's uh, you know normally she doesn't. Uh, side with that type of stuff. Yeah, I'm you curious. maybe don't want to ask that question. No, I'll ask her. I'll say, what do you think? Do you think we should give my kids ayahuasca? Are you are you a vegetarian, vegan? Vegan. When did you become vegan? Probably like nine years ago, but it was because, it was before the animal stuff. I just had a lot of digestive issues. Me too. When I was growing up, I would only poop like twice a week. It was awful. I used to do that too. Bad. Like I would like poop once a week. My mom says I'd get too distracted and I wouldn't poop. And then I get backed up and then yeah. I'd sit on the toilet for like two hours just screaming and have to miss school that day. We're supposed to poop twice a day. Huh. Well, now I poop just constantly. That's good. Well, it's not good. Not good. It's constantly. No. And in public. <laughs> not, not like, like not in a street? bathroom. Yes. Okay. Like a better you- version of the in this recently I shattered a record. You might get arrested. No, no. You can't, you can't get arrested for pooping on the street. In public? Yeah. If it happens, it happens. That's no there's no law against <laughs> having an accident. I mean what, I guess if, a lawyer I guess you? if it's an accident, but if you're always doing this I'm not always doing it, but I'm saying I have I have IBS and it's like recently it happened twice in one day. You might need to work on fixing your gut. No, I know my gut's a wreck. Yeah, we should maybe talk about that. Well, like today, for just for this interview, like I don't, I really don't eat this morning until after this is over. You should talk to my husband. 
Why? He does all digestive stuff. Oh man, he could. I should do that all because right. that's that's disruptive to life. No, it is, but it's it's also a good story at every party. I guess if that's the most important. I maybe secretly I like uh, the thrill of oh no, I'm about to shit myself once a week. What? Well, because well, because you're getting rid of toxins. No, I think so I like, like it because yes. it, it allows me to tell my wife I can't go someplace. Well, maybe you need to work on that with your wife. Mm-mm. Like if you don't want to go somewhere, don't go. Well, I, that's what I do. That's what I do ninety nine percent of the time. But in a relationship, it's a give and take. Sure. So one percent of the time, I have to give. Have you ever communicated with the Philly fanatic? Like the people? No, the Philly fanatic. He's a, the, the mascot. He's a big mm. animal. Uh, no, because he is a person. I talk, is he I a talk person? to animals. Mm, I don't think so. All right. Do you want to see a photo of a dog? Your dog yeah, or just my, a dog? Well, I don't, I don't want, what information do I have oh, to give to, you? to communicate. Yeah, you, I don't know. Picture. Yeah. yeah. Name? You want a name? What's your dog's name? Carl. Okay. Male. Male. Living or deceased? Living. Okay. Picture, sure. Oh, that's it? Let's do it. That's all you need? That's all I need. Okay. Don't hold my phone. I've well, got weird, I've got weird uh, can you like, folders. So I'm just going to take a minute to connect. I'll be here. Okay, good. So Carl Living. Mm-hmm. Do I know how old he is? No. Okay. So the first thing he's showing me is having trouble walking on hardwood floors. Like he slips out sometimes. Don't say anything. I'm going to share a couple things that come through and then I'll ask for your response. It's like he doesn't have the grip that he used to. So I don't know if this is like he can't jump up to where he used to be able to. But the mobility, is that something going on with the floors? No. No, come on. No. Who, slipping? No. No, I don't believe you. Let's see what else he well, says. This <laughs> okay, hold on. Don't, don't give me details. I want to. So he says that, he says that when he's often like in your face, like trying to get your attention, trying to get your attention, trying to get your attention. Too often you're not paying attention to him when he wants you to pay attention to him. And you need to be more focused on him. Have you been really busy lately, or do you find that when you're at home, you're not giving him the attention he wants? I, I think that's fair. What I, what, but I would, what I would say to him is, bro. I'm seeing you standing, so it's not well, like you're sure, on the couch. I, I like to stand uh, when I'm talking. But no, I, I, I've got a lot on my plate. So let me see what else he wants to say. Oh, who, let me. What do you mean, who cares? Well, it's your dog. I know, but there's, there's stuff that I want to know about. Okay, so. It's look, not, look, not him. Of course he wants attention. He's a burn -a doodle Okay, let's see what else he wants to share, and then we can ask him questions. Okay, this is a cliche thing to say, but not all dogs love this. Is there something you do out back, but there's like a throwing action that you're doing? He loves chasing it, but it seems to be different than it used to be. You're talking about the sex. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> no, I'm not. Don't give me more details than I'm I need. I'm not giving you more details. I, is he? Does he like fetch? Is that the, what's the question? Not with a stick, but I'm seeing this action of no, you guys. We're, we're not from the 1960s. Outside with a stick. You, it's you. Uh huh. Not your wife. You're throwing something, and he's loving it. He doesn't seem to be very fast. He's so fast. No, but getting it. Carl's Carl can do anything. But he can. But do you see him kind of slipping? Because maybe no, he, he would doesn't kind of slip. He doesn't slip. Drop it. He doesn't slip. <laughs> But he might like carpet better, so he can no, run in France. Carpet better. A runner. I'll tell you what I want to know. Yeah. Why does Carl take a shit in my movie theater? Because he's trying to tell you something. So. I know. Well, what is he trying to tell it, me? He sh he will if if I let him down in the movie theater. It's got shag carpet that's really long, and he likes to poop down there. I think he thinks it's grass. Or he's mad that you're too busy and not paying attention. No. But let me ask him. Let me ask him. All right. Ask him. All right, Carl. So why are we shitting in the movie theater? infuriating you, especially if you don't go down to the movie theater for a few days and then all of a sudden you go down there and there's a and my son is like dad there's a poop in here all right let's see what's going on and i'm like is it hard he's like it's rock hard i'm like it's been there for a while <laughs> <laughs> when you guys watch movies hold on before you get wait a we second we don't watch movies no wait a second i did recently just watch that that barbie movie oh, did you watch it no it was so cute. But it was like real life. Like it wasn't like f figure. It was like no, people, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Margot Robbie. 
Okay, wait, we're going back to the pooping What do you think of Margot theater. Robbie? I don't know who that is. Are you serious? I don't know anyone. She's beautiful. Oh, my goodness. Don't know anything about her. If Margot Robbie... Did she play Barbie? Yeah. I just... My wife, when I look at my wife, I just wish it was Margot Robbie every day. No, you don't. Well, that's true because I hate an Australian accent. But that aside... All right. Poop session now. Hold on. Please. Okay. All right. Why does Carl like pooping in the movie theater? The rules in this Because it's it's him wanting, it gets your attention. Mm. And then it forces you to do something that he wants you to do, which or that he knows you're going to do, which is come up to him, whether you're saying, why are you doing that? Or what are you doing? I think if you take some time to just be present with him, whatever that might be, that's going to lessen. Why does he bark at my wife every time she walks into a room? Like if she, let's say, let's say Carl's right here. My wife gets up to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. and then comes back into the room. He's going to bark when she comes back in the room. Okay. And it's a very, uh, it's a real bark. He's got a loud bark. Okay. He just feels like he has this very protective nature, but it's interesting that it's when your wife comes back in. So let's see why he feels that he needs to be protective here. I got a hunch. Hold on. Don't tell me. I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to pay $550 to hear it hey. from you. You're not paying five fifty, and I will if you get this one. If you can figure this out, because man, it's annoying. So barking at the wife. What's going on, Carl? She got really mad at me for naming him Carl. Do you know what my wife's name is? No, Carly. <laughs> oh my gosh! So she doesn't like his name still. Well, she doesn't like dogs. Oh my gosh! So Carl's saying that your wife is really loud. Oh my like, gosh, she has a piercing voice. Yeah. And like, <laughs> um, but it's insanity how truth, loud it is. But she actually does, or are you just no, joking? No, I'm not joking. It's, it's, in, it's, it's a, she has a, she has a loud speaking voice. Okay, so let's. And she doesn't know how to whisper, and she also doesn't know proximity. Okay, wait, don't give me details. Because well, then if I say something accurate, you're going to be like, I already told you that, Nikki. Well, okay, wait. So the, I don't think the la I don't think the loud voice is why that's no. just what he said. So let's let's see what else is there. Just so loud and annoying. What what can we do to stop this, Carl? I think I I know what he's gonna say. We have to we have to Shh, kill my don't. wife, <laughs> <laughs> which isn't a horrible idea. Hey, you got to stop interrupting me because then it distracts me. No wonder these things are ninety minutes no, long. No, they're I don't do it with the people. I do it in my own room by myself. Do you need some ayahuasca? No, I don't need ayahuasca. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ignoring all of you right now. You can talk if you want. It won't matter. Okay. Dean Jones starred in the Shaggy DA. Dean Jones. Also Herbie the Love Bug guy. Ah. Uh, what, the voice of, of the car? No, he was- the No, the car didn't talk. <laughs> he he says just that, beeped. Beep, beep. that she never shares her food and he gets pissed. What? Do you-, do you No, we don't give him table food. Right. But do the kids, like, do-, do Does he get scraps, things fall, and she's, oh. like, so offended? Like, the, but your wife doesn't ever do that, and he thinks that's highly offensive. No, she, li she actually appreciates that he eats all the food that, that falls to the floor from the children. But she doesn't give it to him. No, no. She never gives him yeah, food. Yeah, he wants her to. Well, so you're saying my dog likes food, huh? Well. <laughs> Are you going to stop barking, Carl? I just think that he's not going to stop barking until your wife respects his space. So whatever that means to her and to you guys, I think right. I think that's going to make a difference. I'll talk to her. I have you. I bought you a gift. I, I didn't buy it for you. I just give people that come on my show a gift from my house because um, I don't want it anymore. Is it your movie theater? I'm giving you my movie theater. I don't know. No, it's just something for your place. Something simple. Oh my goodness. I thought you would like this. <laughs> Wait, who who are these dogs? That's Ava and that's Castro. Castro dead. But really loved him. Oh. Really loved him. Too you hard. got a, you're flying home today? Yes, I so can't take that on the you plane. You can take this on the plane. People I know. will love it. People are fans. Mm, you just no. let them know. Uh, no, well, I'll ship it to you then. <laughs> Here, take your gift. <laughs> what am I going to do with this? What do you I, I, do you have a fireplace? I can't take this home. Well, you, you guys, that'll be nice. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> It'll be a nice backdrop. Oh, did you want to talk to Castro or no? 
Did you have anything to say to him? He's you, the I black can. and white one. If you want to, just before we go, because sure. he's he's the one that, that that meant everything to me. Yeah. So how's he? He died. I don't need. Don't to tell, tell me. Don't okay, tell me. Well. Okay, so Castro. The first image I got, I don't know why, is a baseball cap. Did you do you wear baseball caps, or would you put a baseball cap on him? I I wear uh, hats all the time. To like hide a, my balding spot. Like a stereotypical baseball cap? Well, sure. I like mean, a regular a regular yes. cap. Okay. A, a baseball hat, sure. What do you we call just, it? We just, we just call them hats nowadays. <laughs> well, hat could be like a sombrero. I, I don't wear a sombrero. Is that what you thought? Is that what you got from <laughs> well, Castro? Okay, you showing me a baseball cap. Why is this important? Oh, is this going to be by the time that I stuck my finger in his butt? <laughs> <laughs> when you guys were out... At the park or out, it looks like you're not just walking down the sidewalk. It looks like there's a lot of grass, but you are holding him while mm-hmm. walking, wearing your baseball cap. Would mm-hmm. you hold him a lot outside? Yeah, I held him all the time. Okay. Like, as you can tell from the set no, photo. But I mean, like while walking. Uh huh. No, I, I carried him a lot. Okay. But, he, but normally he, he loved walks, but I carried him whenever he, if I, that wasn't uncommon to carry him. Yeah, he loved, he loved being in your arms. You're walking outside at a park. There's a lot of grass where he could be running around. You're wearing a baseball cap. He loved that. What else do you want to say, Castro? That's all he wanted to say? What Let it, me you guys, finish. He's been dead for— I can only get one message at a time. Something juicy or tell me how death was. I got an image of him, like, throwing up, oh. regurgitating. Oh, good for you. Did he do that a lot? Oh, my goodness. He did it all the time. Yeah. He was a puker. Okay. Good for you. Hey, that's the first. That's that. All right, I'll give you that one. That and how you, loud my wife but is. But you have to remember, too, like— you're talking. They're laughing. No, no, I know, you know? They, those are the idiots. But the puke. He, oh, guy. He. At first, I thought it was just, like, just going to be a car sick thing, but it was his whole life. And the thing is, in the middle of the night, and you knew you had about five of those before it was coming out. So it was get him off the bed, get him into a shower if I was in a hotel room, or get him hang his head out of a window. I've done that before. So they bring up these messages, so you know, hey, it's them. This is me. All right, Castro, what else? Oh. What do you need to tell us about your passing, Castro? Dad wants to know about your passing. I don't know if I really want to know. It seems— Don't tell me details. So sad. He said that it it was not a surprise for him. It feels like it was scheduled. Mm-hmm. Was he were you euthanized? Did you oh, help yeah. him transition? Uh-huh. So he says it wasn't a surprise. It was scheduled. He knew it was happening. He wasn't—he's stressing that he wasn't surprised— so I, I'm thinking that's why he, he's sharing that because you were maybe one worried that was he okay with this? Yes, he knew about it. What else did we need to know about it? He said I didn't feel any pain. W- w- were you experiencing physical pain beforehand, Castro? He said I I was feeling physical like physical achiness, but it 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 feels like closer and closer it got to the day he actually passed. He had no pain, but had no feeling really. Like it was like. I just am seeing him like lying down a lot, but he's totally happy and he's not upset, but it just feels like he's a little bit separated from the physical body. Was there a shift in, like, did he just like stop moving? I mean, yeah, it was. It was like, lay, like laying down, like really just wasn't getting sure. up. Yeah, no, he was, it was the last month. I just basically just brought him around. Okay, so he's telling you that places. in that last month, I mm-hmm. guess, when he wasn't moving around on his own, he was not in pain during that last month. Well, then I shouldn't have put him down. No, 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 no. Oh, I still should have. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because okay. he says he, he knew about that. But he wants you to know because he's saying that in your mind, you were worried that he was in so much pain during that last month. And did I wait too long? Did I do it too soon? Did I well, not I didn't do want everything? To, I was, it was the holidays. So I was like, yeah, can we just hang on for a few more days so yeah. I don't associate, oh, yay, let's open presents no, so and he's a, kill our dog. So so he wants you to know that. What else? you celebrate about, Christmas? No. You don't. I mean, like, I just, oh. I don't, I don't like the, the, I grew up very Catholic in mm-hmm. a Catholic family. I don't know. I, maybe it was just like my growing up, like my mom being stressed about money. Like I just have a thing about like people spending money on me that I don't need stuff. Like I'd rather, I don't want you to feel like you have to buy me something. Mm-hmm. So I don't really like the whole gift thing, even can, with can birthdays. I take, can I have that back? Well, that, I mean, no, you gave it to me already. <laughs> But like gifts on Christmas or uh-huh. gifts on your birthday or you have to do it this or whatever. Well, I forget the gift element of but it. But like just, Santa? Just, yeah, isn't that cute? No, it's a lie. You're well, lying sure. to your kids and then they find out and they're heartbroken. No, I wasn't heartbroken when I found out that Santa wasn't real. Well, how? What, you just, My m- mom made me feel like I was like uh, like I was a big boy. Like, like, okay, you know, don't let your little brother know, but this is 
you know, I don't know. I just remember feeling like I was still excited because I still, it was still like the whole festiveness of, of the holiday was exciting. Yeah. But what about the pressure then when your friends still think Santa is true? And then what do you do? I don't know. You just don't tell them. When I have kids, I don't think I'm not doing Santa. All right. Lucky kids. <laughs> My kids are not going to suffer as a result. Wait, let's go back to Castro. Who doesn't like to get a gift? Castro said that you let him give you a kiss on the lips and mm. or nose. Oh, sure. But see, it's unique to him. All holes were in play. So not other dogs, just him. Like he was saying, this was special. Dad, let me do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, uh -huh. not the other siblings. So is that something unique? That my you, siblings, you mean You mean the other dogs? Other dogs. Right. Like, yes. is that something that you, that it was unique to him with you? Yeah, probably. He, yeah. So he likes that. He liked that. He's reminding you of that. his breath is rancid too. Do you want me to ask him a specific question? Mm-mm. No, he was a good dog. Tell him I loved him. Nikki? Daniel? Thank you. Uh, for taking time out today of course. to talk to me. I wish you all the best. And uh, let's do it again when my next uh, pet dies. Let's do it. <laughs> but like, that was really sad. <laughs> but it's also not sad because then fun messages come through. I'm going to, I'll hit you up uh, after I do my first um, uh, ayahuasca experience. I'll let you know how it goes. You have to go to the right guy, Hummingbird Church in California. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to hit up Hummingbird. <laughs> Paw show. Well, I want to thank Nikki for being on the show and uh, for letting me know what Carl's been thinking. Carl, was she accurate? Did she say everything the right way? Do you like Do you like being on a podcast? Oh, good boy. Oh, good boy. He, oh, I can tell what he's saying right now. He's saying, I like being scratched. Yeah, I've got a gift. Here, you stay there. Put your head. Oh, good boy. Nothing to plug. Boys wear pink. Check that out. Carl and I will be on a walk every day. We walk at least three miles a day. Is that right, Carl? Oh, you're full of shit, Daniel. We walk every three days, maybe one mile. I know, but I like to tell people that I walk you every day three miles because that's what a good owner would do. You know, his breath doesn't stink. I don't brush his teeth, but his breath doesn't stink. And maybe that's because I use a, a good dog food, just food for dogs. I need you to sponsor the show. Your dog food is great. My dog loves it. Both of my dogs like it. Uh, it's just very expensive. What do you What do you think I pay for for dog food? I don't know the answer. It seems, it seems like it's a lot. Well, I'm getting the sign to wrap it up. Thanks for listening. I'll see you next week. You do whatever you want. Go ahead. What's a time time? And I saw all the way around. Then mommy said you can't go outside or you'll melt. So one day it was winter and they got to go outside. And they went outside. And then the man was warm. It was sunny and they melted. The end. Tasha! 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 Tasha!